Well, President Trump's about to sign a revised version of his immigration and travel ban, now targeting six countries, removing Iraq from the original list of seven. So is this new version going to be immune to legal challenges that got the administration into so much trouble the first time? Put a stop to it. Judge Andrew Napolitano is Fox News senior judicial analyst. We've got a lot to talk about, but we'll start with that ban. We has do. it now, as far as we understand it, has it been crafted in a way that will survive legal challenge? Well, we haven't seen it yet, but thanks to our intrepid John Roberts, our chief correspondent at the White House, we have a pretty good idea of what it says. We, we know, for example, that lawyers in the Justice Department took the four orders of judges that had enjoined its enforcement, Brooklyn, Alexandria, Virginia, two on the West Coast, District Court and Circuit Court, and made a checklist of all the judicial objections to it and attempted to address all those objections. They fall into two categories. One is, what is the basis for the seven, now six countries in, from, from which, on which the ban will be imposed? And I, I think that we're going to see some language in the executive order that will say why these six countries have chosen. It's a very low bar for the president to meet, a rational basis bar. Give us a reason why you're doing what you're doing. If he gives a reason, any sound reason, the, the judges can't drive a truck through that opening. Even though some of them have said, we don't care what you say, we're looking to pass statements to see that there is a religious animus. That's the second part. Will there be a religious animus? Now, in, there's nothing that the, the um, Justice Department can do about comments that candidate Donald Trump said, or that, or that President Trump said when he was candidate Once Trump. Now. I think it's exquisitely unfair. You, you've probably never seen this either, mm -hmm. that a candidate's language in the heat of the campaign is being used to impair his ability to govern, and he's being held to the standard that he set during the campaign. So the question you asked in the intro, will there be litigation on this? Of course there will. There are people who honestly believe the president's doing the wrong thing, that we should have open borders, that anybody who wants to come here should be able to come there, and there are people who, have, who hate him and want to do everything they can to frustrate him. Those people will file complaints, but there'll be much less of an opening of a gap for a judge to drive a wedge in this time, having learned, I believe, their lesson from the last time. I want to talk to you, too, about these allegations that there are FISA orders that may have been aimed at Trump Tower in some way. There's been a lot of reporting out there. But the former director of national intelligence, Jim Clapper, this weekend said, I would have known about it. He says he outright denies it. There are reports, we haven't confirmed them, that the FBI director, Jim Comey, wants uh, the Justice Department and others to go out and say, uh, to, to shoot this stuff down and say it didn't happen. But there, if it happened, it could have been perfectly legal if it happened. Okay, so there's a lot of mixing of apples and oranges here. Mm -hmm. The FBI gets search warrants looking for evidence of crimes. Mm -hmm. It does not get search warrants looking for national security. The NSA gets FISA warrants looking for national security matters, not looking for evidence of crime. And they're so much easier to get than the criminal warrants. Of course, of course. Now, because of a, the, the unique interpretation of a Ronald Reagan executive order, 13 222, known as 13 triple two. And because of the language in the USA Freedom Act, the successor mm -hmm. to much of the FISA law, NSA now has the ability to capture in real time the digital copies of everybody's phone calls, everybody, cell and landline, everybody's keystrokes, mobile device and Look desktop. Out. Yes, all digital information going over fiber optics into the US, out of the US, or within the US. NSA works for the president. If the president asks for a transcribed copy of any of that, he'll give it to him. As well, the FISA statute says in it, notwithstanding all the rules above and below, the president of the United States can order surveillance on any person in the United States in conjunction with a certificate or a certification Technically, filed by the attorney general. Legally, but maybe not constitutionally. In my view, it's profoundly unconstitutional, <laughs> but it is legal because the statute says it. Right, okay. So think about this. If you're Barack Obama and you have the ability by making a phone call to hear what Donald Trump is saying, are you going to bother? Which Were you going to bother and try and get a warrant? Why would you get the warrant? Yeah, his spokesperson has said he never ordered it. No one from the White House ordered it. But let me ask you a question. With all these legal frameworks in mind, could the current president now go and say, I want to see the FISA orders that they exist. I don't know that FISA would give him the orders, but he could get them from NSA, not from FISA. Okay. FISA Maybe is the judiciary. It. It's a different branch of the government. But the NSA works for him. They're in the military. Anything oh he orders, they'll do. All right, Judge, you've given us More a to lot come. to think about as you More always do. Good to see you. <laughs> Bill, back to you. Thank you, Shannon. John Scott.